It's time for Wave 3 Listens Live. Taking your calls to hear what you have to say on Kentuckiana's first live local TV talk show. And hitting the streets to be live on location in your community. All hosted by Cindy Sullivan. This is Wave 3 Listens Live. Morning, everybody. Happy Friday. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. I'm happy to be here. Our new time, 11 o'clock, 11 to 12. So make sure that you tell your friends. We're an hour later during the week now for Listens Live. And we will be taking your calls today. We have a very interesting topic. I know it's going to interest many of you out there. We're going to talk about when you should call a lawyer if you're injured in an accident because we have an expert here today, Mike Schaefer, is joining us. Mike, thank you so much for coming in today. It's good to be here, Cindy. Thanks for having me. So just so that we can um, uh, credential you, you want to tell us about your education and experience? Well, I'm a, I went to a high school here locally, so I'm a local boy. went to Trinity, went to the University of Louisville, and got my undergraduate degree in marketing. And uh, then I went to the University of Louisville School of Law, okay. graduated in 1985. So I've been uh, around and doing this for, for a while. Okay. I did, uh, did a stint with the Commonwealth Attorney's Office where okay. I put bad guys in jail for three years. And then I worked for an insurance defense firm for a couple years. Really didn't like that too much. And I've been out on my own uh, with my own law office ever since. Okay. Your law office is downtown on 7th Street. That's correct. Uh, we're a block south of the courthouse. Okay very conveniently located for uh, trial work. Okay, 440 South 7th Street specifically, that's Suite 200, and Mike's telephone number, if you wanna go ahead and jot it down, 584-9511, or there's an 800 number, that's actually an 855 number, 487-4878, <laughs> or you can go online if you're interested in talking to Mike, mikeshaferlaw.com, or you can call us right now. Our telephone number, of course, as always, is 571-5263 or 888-800-9283. That's our toll-free number. Just go ahead and give us a call right now, and Mike will be happy to answer your questions. And your specialty is personal injury? That, that's correct. Although the uh, Kentucky Bar Association does not allow us to uh, have specialties, that's the area that I do okay. concentrate in, uh, is personal injury law, which includes accident law. Uh, the most common type would be car accidents, truck accidents, fatal accidents, that sort of thing, uh, if, uh, if you were looking for, uh, for an attorney in that regard. Okay. We should also mention that Mike is an accomplished author. He has written Three. two. Three Another now. one already? Yes, ma'am. Seven Potholes That Can Wreck Your Kentucky Accident Case. That was your first one? Uh, no, that was my second book, okay. actually. What You Don't Know About Buying Car Insurance Can Hurt You is another one. So we're going to be talking specifically today about those potholes. I love to play on words. The seven potholes that can wreck your Kentucky accident case. So if you've got questions for Mike Schaefer, lawyer, go ahead and give us a call. 571-5263-888-800-9283. So back to your education. I love, um, because I'm not from Louisville, I love in Louisville when you meet someone and they say, where do you go to school? The answer is Trinity, or St. X, or Atherton, or it's your high school. It's, a, <laughs> it, it's an oddity, and uh, it's a, it's a, I'll use the word pothole that I, I fall into when I meet somebody that's not from around here. They'll mm -hmm. ask me where I went to school, wanting to know where I went to law school, and I end up saying Trinity High School. <laughs> so, and then they're giving me this look, and I have like, to go in that like same what? explanation there. So, <laughs> it is kind of an interesting. It was part of the reason that we love Louisville, though. And U of L, obviously, you're still a fan because you've got the red tie got on. Got the today. red on. Yeah. Uh huh. Is he doing the, doing that to me on purpose? Do you think, guys? I'm wearing turquoise today. I don't know who, what team is turquoise. What do you say we go ahead and get to a call or two, that shall would, we? That would be great. It, we do have some open lines, so if you want to go ahead and get on board to ask Mike a question, 571-5263, and we will go first, if I can hit the button right, to Andrew, calling here in yes. Louisville. Hey, Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Hi. Do you have a question for Mike? Uh, yes, I was involved in a, a very uh, serious work injury at work and uh, had some hands, uh, fingers amputated. Oh. And I just had some questions in regards to workman comp and uh, settlement. When when a good time would be to contact a lawyer without upsetting the insurance company too too much? Well, from my perspective, Andrew, any time uh, that you're injured and it's a serious injury, you should contact a lawyer as soon as possible. Not necessarily to hire the attorney, but to get information so that you know what the best avenue is for you to proceed on. 
Uh, sometimes there's some little things that an attorney can t tell you that uh, you might not even consider that will be very important to the potential settlement of your workers' comp case. So if I was you, I would call an attorney as soon as possible just to get some questions answered and make sure that everything is going in the right direction. Most attorneys give a free consultation, so you, don't, uh, you won't be out any money. You can get some information and then decide whether or not that is the best way for you to go personally. Andrew, best of luck to you. Thank you so much for the call. We do appreciate it. And, and Mike, to the, to the point of the answer to your question, one of the potholes uh, that you talk about in your book is, is all about documenting. You want to talk about that? We'll talk about, we can go through these seven potholes. We're, we're start with number one. Okay. That's <laughs> always a good place to start. Okay. I like number seven best, though, so you got to stay tuned until we get to number seven. So pothole number one, not taking immediate action at the accident scene. That, that is one of those things that people um, just assume that everything is going to be taken care of. And I want to qualify this pothole first off. If you are injured or in a position where you're in danger by doing anything, you should always wait for the police. You should always take care of the injured person. You should always call 911 immediately to get the help on the way. But if you're able to get around and you're luckily, you know, you're you don't feel like you are seriously injured at that point in time, it's best to start getting some information. And what I'm talking about is things like getting the insurance information from the driver that uh, uh, caused the accident. Uh, if there are witnesses to the accidents, trying to get in their name and their address and their phone number so you can contact them later. The police most of the time will interview them and most of the time they will put that information on the accident report but not always. There have been instances where uh, I've had clients that have said, well, there was witnesses to the accident, but they never showed up on the accident report. Right. They had no way to contact them. And if there's a dispute as to how the accident happened, that independent ac a witness can be critical to the outcome of your case. It can make the difference between you being compensated for your injuries and really getting nothing. Wow. Okay, so that is important. You know, you, I guess you always think about exchanging insurance cards and getting that information, but you wouldn't think about necessarily the name and address and, pro and number. I think probably the address is a critical uh, factor too with people now because cell phone numbers change so quickly and all that sort of thing. So, well, that that is absolutely correct. And uh, what I would suggest is always taking down the license plate number of okay. the car that hit you. Uh, a case in point, I had a client who exchanged insurance information with somebody that hit them, did not call the police because they didn't think they were hurt seriously. It ended up that their injuries were a lot worse than they thought when they contacted the individual at the address and phone number that was given. It was disconnected and uh -huh. they had no way of tracking this individual down because they didn't have a license number or any wow. other okay. identifying information. Okay important stuff. What do you say we go ahead and take a real quick break? That'd be great, Cindy. Mike Schaefer is joining us today. He is an attorney and he is going to take your calls today if you've got questions. He, he does, I can't say it, but, but concentrates. <laughs> concentrates. There, that's the word. Concentrates in uh, personal injury. So if you've got a question, go ahead and give us a call right now, 571-5263. We'll get you all lined up and we'll be right back with Listen Live. Stay with us. Mike Schaefer is an attorney and he's joining us today on Listen's Live and he's written a book called Seven Potholes That Can Wreck Your Kentucky Accident Case. Pothole number two, not documenting everything that happens after the accident. And pothole number three, not seeking immediate medical treatment or cooperating fully with your physician. Very important. We, we talk to some physical therapists, Michael, and they always say that that's one of the important things. You may not think that you're injured, but maybe two weeks down the road, that's when you start to feel a little bit of pain in your neck and you think, oh, well, holy schmollies. And, that, and, and that's exactly it. Some pe when you've been in an accident, you're running on adrenaline right after the accident and right. you don't always know what's going on with your body and whether or not you are hurt. And there's many people that don't uh, feel the pain till the next day or even a week or 10 days later. Right. One of the things that insurance companies will do and the insurance uh, defense attorneys will do, they will uh, talk about that gap in treatment 
or that delay in seeking treatment as a reason that you weren't really injured. If it was that bad, why didn't you go to the doctor immediately? If it was that bad, why did you wait the seven, eight, ten days? Uh, and th that is something that any question you have to address can have a, uh, an effect on what happens in your case as you go forward. So it's an, I always suggest to people, go to the doctor and get checked out just to make sure that you're okay. okay. Um, and in this situation, if you have car insurance or you're in a vehicle, you have in Kentucky what's called personal injury protection or no fault benefits, which is a minimum of $10,000 that will go towards your medical bills and or lost wages. So mm -hmm. that you're, you're, it's not gonna come out of your personal pocket as long as there's insurance there. Okay. The other thing that I want to tell everybody is that we may be going to NBC for a special report about the shuttle launch. So we'll be doing that maybe um, here during the hour. So uh, make sure that you stay tuned for that as well. And we'll get back to the phone calls. Great. We're going to go to uh, Priscilla calling from LaGrange. Hi, Priscilla. Hello. How are you today, Cindy? Just fine. Thanks for asking. Did you have a question for Michael? Yes, I do. Um, I wanted to know if he does um, disability, social security cases, and I have a question because my husband was denied, and I, is there a length of time that we have to appeal? Uh, Priscilla, I am sorry, but I do not do social security or disability cases. Um, I would uh, suggest that you call the Louisville Bar Association. They have a lawyer referral service to get a, uh, the name of an attorney that does concentrate in that law and that, can, uh, that would be able to answer your question. So I'm sorry, I just don't, I do not know the answer to that one. All right, well, thanks very much for the call, Priscilla. We do appreciate it. And we're going to go to John now calling from Shelby County. John, did you have a question? Uh, yes. Uh uh, are you I, you're, the TV and the phone's not up to date? So are, are you hearing me? Yes, you just talk in your phone. Ignore your television. Okay. Well, the question I got: my wife's involved in an accident in Louisville at this time, okay. and uh, she was sitting at a light, and someone hit her in the rear, uh, and there was a an officer sitting beside him when it happened. Uh, I told her to take his card uh, name and number, but she, he gave her a card and had him to move over off the road because it was a non-injury. Uh, she says she doesn't think it's any damage to the car. I told her to go ahead and do a, a, a re accident report anyway, just in case, because we're getting ready to leave on a trip next week. Uh, is there anything else that might I might be able to do uh, that uh, would help us on this? Because we're going to be gone. Uh, next week and it'll be a while before we can get back in touch with uh, what's going on with it. Well, John, it sounds like you're doing all, all the right things uh, now. I mean, you've, you, you've got the information from the officer. I would definitely get an accident report just in case. That way you have the insurance information. You may want to go ahead and have your uh, wife uh, checked out of the, at the emergency room or immediate care center just to make sure everything is okay. And um, I would take, you know, pictures of, uh, of the vehicles at the scene also. And uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed that, you know, she doesn't have any pain tomorrow morning and you all have a great vacation. Thank you so much for the call, John. Best of luck to you. Do you have to request an accident report from the police department? You have to call the police. If the police come, uh, they'll, do an ac they'll, they'll prepare an accident report unless uh, it happen the accident happens on private property. Okay. Um, if it happens on private property, you don't. There is something called a civilian collision report that mm -hmm. you would uh, mm -hmm. uh, request from Frankfurt. You fill that out and you put in your information on one side. The other uh, car would put their information in on the other side, and that would include insurance information and how you think the accident happened so that it is documented. The most important thing is to document that the accident actually did occur. Yeah, I'm sure that the way uh, the courts run, and sometimes it takes weeks and months to get to um, some sort of m meeting, that keeping good records is really important. Oh, it, it, it is key. and it, the other thing, with an accident report, it's seven to ten days in Jefferson County before you can pick one up from the okay. police okay. department under most circumstances. So uh, if you don't get that insurance information right when uh, when you're at the accident scene, you might not be able to get your car fixed from the at-fault party for seven to ten days until you find out who their insurance company is. Gotcha. All righty. 
Mike Schaefer is joining us today for Listens Live, and we've got Kara Hicks in the studio with the little critter that is absolutely adorable from the Kentucky Humane Society. You're going to want to see that. And we're taking your calls, 571-5263. If you have been in an accident and you want some advice from a lawyer, Mike can help you. Go ahead and give us a call right now, and we'll be right back with Listens Live. Pothole number four in a series of seven, courtesy of Mike Schaefer. Giving statements, signing any papers, or accepting insurance estimates or offers of settlement without obtaining legal advice is not a good idea. That's from The Seven Potholes That Can Wreck Your Kentucky Accident Case by Mike Schaefer, a book that he wrote. And he's in the studio with us today taking your calls. We're going to go ahead and get to a couple. If you've got a question about um, if you were injured, in an accident, car wreck, a any, fall, all of those sorts fall, of things? Any type of injury accident yes. uh, we can address, dog bites, um, truck accidents, motorcycle accidents, pedestrian accidents, bicycle accidents. Okay. Any, anyone that was injured and is a victim of a, you know, the negligence of somebody else. Okay. All right. We're going to go ahead and get to Steve with a question. He's calling from here in Louisville. Hello, Steve. Yeah, how are you doing today? I was wondering if y'all uh, handle like wrongful death suits. We do, Steve. Do you uh, have well, what the case is, I know you're not supposed to mention people's names, this health care facility was taking care of my father. He had cancer and uh, he fell in his apartment and I called him and they come out. And when they come out, uh, they refused to call 911 and uh, he died three days after he fell from a head injury. Well, that's awful. Yes, sir. Uh, how long ago did that happen, Steve? I, uh, he, I called him. He fell on the morning of the 28th, and he died on the 1st. Okay. Was that uh, in June? December the 28th is when he fell, and he died on the 1st. Okay. Um, Two days later. Have, what, what you're going to want to do, Steve, is get a copy of all the medical records in reference to that, and then call an attorney that specializes in medical malpractice or wrongful death law. Um, the, what you have to look at is whether or not there was a deviation from the standard of care or the way uh, doctors routinely do something in this area. Uh, and it, would, it will entail having a nurse practitioner or another doctor take a look at those records to make a determination as to whether or not there, uh, there was negligence on the part of a doctor. Okay, Steve, we really do appreciate your call. And Mike Schaefer is taking our calls today, but we're going to break right now for a special NBC report. Our guest today, Mike Schaefer, has written a book called The Seven Potholes That Can Wreck Your Kentucky Accident Case. And pothole number five is not hiring an attorney or hiring the wrong attorney. That kind of stuff can get you into trouble. And we're taking your calls today, 571-5263. And what do you say, Mike? We go ahead and get to a couple of calls. We're going to talk to Wendy, calling from Louisville. Hi, Wendy. How are you? Hi. Good morning. How are you? Just fine. Um, what can we do for you, Wendy? I was in an accident last year and have been through many months of physical therapy for my injuries. Um, the attorney, well, not the, I'm sorry, the at-fault driver's insurance made me a, a settlement offer pretty quickly. Um, it was a very low amount. I declined it and said that I was going to continue with treatment. Um, and I'm still continuing with treatment. And my question is, based on how much medical expenses I have had, um, how do you figure what an appropriate settlement amount would be? Is there some sort of formula for that? Yeah, oh, that's an interesting question. Well, Wendy, there, there used to be kind of a ballpark formula for uh, what a personal injury case is worth, but that is not uh, the case anymore. Uh, I think it was about 15 years ago, insurance companies went to computer programs to determine what your accident case is worth. There's various uh, names for them like Colossus, Teach, Smart, but they're all basically the same and you're not just a, a number now, you're 10,000 plus numbers because there's over 10,000 items that can be entered into these computer programs to, to determine what uh, what your case is worth. So most of the time if an insurance company has made an initial low offer it's going to be extremely difficult to get it up higher without 
uh, contacting an attorney that understands how these programs work. So I would definitely call someone in reference to that uh, to, to make sure that you're on the w right track and that you're able to uh, able to get the best settlement possible on, on your case. But if they've, if they've made a low, low offer, it's probably not going to go up. I will tell you that based on insurance company uh, statistics and their own reports that they pay almost double uh, for an injury case to somebody that has an attorney as opposed to somebody that doesn't have an attorney. All right, Wendy, best of luck to you. Thank you very much for calling in today. And we probably have time to get you on if you've got a question for Mike Schaefer, 571-5263. And we're going to go now to Lisa, who has a question. Good morning, Lisa. Yes, how are you doing? Just fine, thanks. My question was, is there a certain period of time that you have to go after an insurance company if you were involved in an accident? Um, assuming that, first of all, did the accident happen in the state of Kentucky? Uh, assuming that the, at least that the accident happened in the state of Kentucky, uh, you have two, the statute of limitations is two years from the date of the accident in order to file the claim, or two years from the date of the last no-fault PIP payment towards your medical bills, not to exceed four years. So you want to run on a baseline of two years as far as the time that you can, uh, can file that claim. Uh, if it's getting close to that period, I would definitely uh, contact an attorney that concentrates in personal injury law to make a determination as to how long you have to file that case. All right, Lisa, thanks very much for the call. We do appreciate it. And we've got Kim on the line, but we've got some open lines if you want to go ahead and give us a call. Our telephone number is 571-5263 or 888-800-9283. We've got uh, 15 minutes or so left. Plenty of time to answer your questions with Mike Schaefer. He's an attorney that concentrates in personal injury law. So give us a call right now, and we'll be right back with Listen's Live. Our guest today, Mike Schaefer, has written a book, Seven Potholes That Can Wreck Your Kentucky Accident Case. Pothole number six is not being completely honest with your attorney or not cooperating fully. And pothole number seven, exaggerating your injuries or dishonesty. Not good things to do. Not a good idea to be dishonest, is it? Absolutely not. That can uh, really destroy a case in a lot of ways. Uh, one of the things, if I know uh, what's going on, what your history is, mm -hmm. I can react to it and we can develop a plan that's best for your case. But if you hide it from me then it, or your doctor, it's going to create a lot of problems down the road. One of the most common things people do is they will uh, forget, they will not tell somebody about a prior accident that they were in where they okay. were treated for, say, a similar injury. And okay. that hurts you, one, because the doctor doesn't know that, so he's not going to be able to treat you as well. But when we get to court and the doctors ask, ask the question, did you know about the accident that happened in 2002? And he says, no, my client never told me, or the patient right. never told me right. about that. One, it makes the doctor look like he wasn't thorough, right. and it makes, it makes it look like you were being dishonest. And, if, and the theory would be if you were dishonest about that, are you dishonest about something else that's going on in the case? Gotcha. Okay. So honesty is always the best policy. We're going to go ahead and get to a couple of more calls. Kim is hanging on from Bergen, Kentucky. Hello, Kim. Hello. How are you today? My name is Kim. Hi, Kim. Hi. Yes, I have a question. Um, my daughter was just in a, a real bad car accident on March 12th, and uh, she was driving a friend's vehicle, but unfortunately she did not have a license, but she did not get charged. She broke her neck, broke her back, oh. broke her arm, and had five staples in her head. Altogether, she was in the hospital for about a month. My question is, the the insurance has stopped paying and she's now getting all these medical bills in the thousands of dollars does she have any legal leg to stand on is there anything she can do um, as far as getting these medical bills paid uh, can she sue the the guy's insurance company to to finish paying these bills now the accident who was it another car's fault the accident kim Yes, it, another vehicle ran her off the road. Okay, and do we know who that other vehicle is? 
yes, the Okay. Well, the first the first thing you're you're only entitled to ten thousand dollars of medical payments under Kentucky PIP law. So once that's exhausted, uh, there's there's no more that you can get from that. The rest of it comes from, uh, or you would the next step would be to turn it over to your health insurance if there's health insurance on on her and let the health insurance company pay those bills. If not, uh, there is no immediate. Uh, nothing immediate that can be done to get those medical bills paid. The at-fault party would have to pay the medical bills when the case is settled. That's part of the damages that you would claim, but there's nothing to make them pay it right now. So what I uh, would do is get an attorney involved in your case to look at the options with the medical bills. A lot of time a, an attorney can write uh, guarantee letters to the providers to stop the uh, phone calls from coming, that would mean that you would have to pay the medical bills from the proceeds of the accident case, or the attorney would, because uh, he is uh, guaranteeing or you're leaning that amount. But uh, it sounds like you're, you're going to need some help to get all this straightened out. Ken, best of luck to you and to your daughter. Thank you so much for the call. We do appreciate it. And Mike, if people are interested in getting a copy of your book, The Seven Potholes, um, how would they go about doing that? Well, Cindy, there's several ways uh, that you can get it. You can go to Amazon.com. Uh, mm -hmm. All my books are uh, for sale on there. Okay. Uh, this particular book, we are actually giving away uh, free of charge to Kentucky residents and individuals that have been in accidents. So you can either call my office, the phone number 502-584-9511, okay. and uh, we'll take your information and mail you a book. Okay. Or you can go to kyaccidentbook.com and there's a little form to fill out and we'll drop it in the mail to you in the next two or three days. Okay, so Mike's office is also um, located downtown at 440 South 7th Street and once again that telephone number 584-9511 if you are interested in the book or if you'd like to talk to Mike in person. There's another number you can call if you're out of the immediate area, 855-487-4878 and the website, once again, MikeSchaferLaw.com. And we'll go ahead and take a real quick break, and we will be right back, so stay with us. <laughs> There's an opportunity for a win-win situation for you this weekend. It's B-Cubed Festival. It's beer, bands, and barbecue. The Bluegrass Brewing Company is sponsoring it. It's at 3929 Shelbyville Road on Friday tonight. 5 p.m., the Dirty Church Revival and Memphis-style barbecue. Saturday at 5 p.m., Texas-style barbecue. And on Sunday at 1 p.m., Owensboro-style barbecue. And it's all a benefit for Jeff Gesser, who's worked at BBB, BBC for 16 years and is very active with U of L Sports. And he has lived through a pulmonary embolism and lost 174 pounds on his own, believe it or not. So he really has made some significant lifestyle changes and um, is, is a, just a great guy, and this is to help with his medical bills. So, and you know all about medical bills. Uh, they, they can be uh, devastating to people, and uh, it's, it's a real tragedy uh, what people have to go through once they're injured in an accident to get the treatment they need. Okay, well, Mike, we really do appreciate you coming in today and joining us and answering our uh, viewers' calls, and you're going to be back. I, I am, next month sometime. I'm okay. not sure which date. I guess you'll let me know. Okay, we will definitely do that, so we hope that you'll join us for that. And if people would like to get a hold of you, your office is downtown on 7th Street, and your telephone number, 584-9511? You got it, 584-9511, yes. Okay, MikeSchaferLaw.com is the website, so you can get, get a hold of him that way as well. Thanks so much. Thanks for joining us with Listen's Live. And have a great weekend, everybody. See you Monday morning.